Good evening, fellow Rotarians. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces. One of the familiar faces who brought me here, Rotarian Vijay Kumar, with whom I came, and so many others, both the music as well as in my own professional fields. Um, a lot of people want to know what a, what a physical medicine specialist is. Today, of course, there are so many specialists. You go to a hospital, you see uh, otorhinolaryngologist and then interventional radio, so many things that even one has to keep abreast with finding out who, what specialist he is. And physiatrist, I am what is called a physiatrist. It is actually spelled like psychiatrist. And in fact, some people do send their uh, uh, patients with psychiatric problems to me, but I am not a psychiatrist. I deal with physical methods of treatment and in physical, you must have heard of physiotherapy. So physiotherapy where they, they give exercises or they give uh, electrotherapy to relieve pain. Uh, uh, well, I am the doctor who prescribes all that and a lot of our work is also in the medical management of the disabled. I set up practice about 20 years ago and huge number of patients used to come to me with, with pain and many of them chronic pain. A lot of people ask me, what is chronic pain? Of course, it's not a, a, a short-term patient you still haven't successfully, that's not the definition for chronic pain. The definition for chronic pain is useless pain. It's pain that is more than three months old. In the sense, you know, all of us know that pain is a very protective thing. When you have a fall and you, you bruise your elbow or you have a fracture or any, any part of the body, if you have a throat pain, and you are know, uh, not able to speak for some time. So, when, it, when that acute pain, the useful pain becomes chronic, that is when you need other methods of treatment. I found this cartoon in, uh, uh, in the internet and it says, and this is actually one of my patients told me. I asked her, Wali, how are you? So, he said, Wali, how are you? So, pain is a very, very subjective phenomenon. There are uh, various definitions for pain. Everyone knows it's a very unpleasant thing. And one of the commonest reasons for people to uh, visit their doctor is pain. And uh, one needs to be very careful in, you know, attending to a patient with pain. Because uh, uh, we should be... The, the, there are so many causes of neck and back pain that one cannot be uh, too sure about the diagnosis because low back pain is low back pain, but there are so many causes for that. So now we come to the evolution of man and why do we, why is my practice flourishing so much? Why is my future looking so bright? It's because of the evolution of man from, from the ape to 75% of the <coughs> workforce today sits at work. Almost all of us sit at work. Man as an animal has to keep moving. But unfortunately, we spend, I, I, I ask people now, how, how long you sit at work? I go to office, call it, money poem, sir. After I put three million at the head, sir. So there, the gone are the days when you used to work for eight hours, nine hours. So a lot of youngsters today coming in with pain. And until this period, you know, when man was a hunter or a gatherer or even a farmer or an agriculturist, there used to be some physical movement. But once the industrial revolution started, even there there was some repetitive movement. But today, almost all of us sitting like this at the, at the computer are at risk for pain. So, this, I will introduce you to a new term called RSI, repetitive stress or repetitive strain injury. Now we all know that there are, we just completed uh, uh, February, so that I just wanted to know how many name, how many different days are there in February and I found of course Valentine's Day. You know why it's called Valentine's Day? You know why Valentine's Day and then there is Children's Day? Ten months in there. Exactly. Nine months I thought. <laughs> Between Valentine's Day and Children's Day is like exactly nine months. So this is World RSI Day, the only day that does not repeat itself. So we did a survey among all these youngsters who are sitting at work. 
and uh, of course this is only a joke because this is probably the workstation of the future and uh, uh, most of them youngsters tending to spend long hours at work sitting or slouching in unnatural poses no exercise edha game aadringa appadina ketta they say amma sir video game aadran sir amma or one chap asked i asked him how many of you do exercise you know one chap says that yes uh, what do you do like daily morning yes daily morning aar mani ki aar mani ki tv la yoga paakre sir so this is the sort of uh, and they also travel long distances to work this is the profile of and the, it does not mean that you need to be a software professional today lawyers today doctors all professions they work at the com now what is the cause for these pains it is because there are we are all at a you know static posture for so long sitting in an unnatural sustained posture and there is a lot of friction wear and tear and damage to the soft tissues of our body so if you take an x ray of the neck of the of the lower back you will find uh, it's absolutely normal so the blood supply to the tissues or what is called relative ischemia to the body causing these pains what are the red flags what are the symptoms so many of my patients come to me sir ore vali sir kai thore stiff a irukku na or ukanda odane i get the pain it starts reminding me then i have to take a break or it need not be just pain it could be tightness a stiffness kai la yeri the sir irumbu urra mari irukke ella kammi theriyilla so you get all this all these various symptoms one chap came driving down from bangalore said sorry i edathukku illada mari irukke i feel my left hand has gone to sleep these sort of symptoms also come loss of strength loss of coordination and pain that breaks you can i come there and yeah yeah okay. is it okay <laughs> can you swivel this pain that breaks you up in the night now rsa can happen as stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 stage 1 is when you come to work how many of you work in the town computer computer almost all of you okay. so uh, uh, if you go to work of course there are youngsters who says spend so much time at uh, in front of the computer but ninga varinga kaalaila 9 manik varinga 10 manik onnu stand kiride and then to go off for lunch then you are free so rsi can be in stage 1 where it is actually preventable but there are patients who come to stage 3 where it's so severe and if you can identify these conditions Yes, sir. First one, ten. <laughs> ten minutes, right? Well, I mean, I I must know that the job is still secure. I don't know. These are all uh, terms that only doctors use. And uh, so we, I examine you probably. I'll say, take your veins, clean or sign away this. What are the bind you know? Cervical spine. Somebody comes, you know, internet is full of information. Somebody comes and they say, sir. ஒருஷோல் You know what's lateral epicondylitis? Ten years old. Ten years old, that's right. And somebody felt very happy. You know, Sachin Tendulkar also had it. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you know, the computers are also giving up, giving new diagnosis. We, we medical professionals love it. new diagnosis. So forward bend syndrome, double crush syndrome. These are all the new uh, terminologies coming up. New diseases coming up. I read in the Hindu today about a sitting disease. sitting is also see i would love to uh, get some new terms like this huh? but essentially there is no software repair wizard you can't install a casper stick in your own system you need to 
install a preventive package, which is uh, what I'm going to talk to you about. What are the factors which you can use to prevent neck or back? First, a little bit of simple anatomy. What is the essential difference between this and this? Two and four legs. 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 Last time I asked this question, I said, Sir, you want to answer, sir? Essentially, the only animal other than man who walks erect is a gorilla. And it's very difficult to find a walking gorilla on two legs also. Very difficult to find a photograph like this. Which essentially means that we belong to the vertebrates, the group, and almost all vertebrates called cheetah, the donkey, the horse, the name anything, the, the spine is parallel to the ground. Whereas scientists have studied the neck, the lower back, the vertebral column of these uh, uh, man and gorilla and found very similar, some similarities, which means that Teyumanam, that is the, the degeneration in certain portions of the vertebral column were very common between this and were absent here and it didn't take too much of too much of study of forces to find out that uh, it's because our vertebral column is not absolutely straight. If you view the straight ahead, you know, straight ahead the vertebral column is straight, but if you turn, you'll find that there is there are curves. There are three curves. So next time you see somebody, you should appreciate the curves. <laughs> One curve is a, the, <laughs> the neck, the neck curve or the cervical curve, the thoracic or the mid back curve, and the lower back curve. Again, this what does this mean? Is that if it is absolutely straight, the force is transmitted absolutely vertically. But since it's not straight. The forces uh, generate vectors which are also horizontal, which means that again a deforming force can occur in wherever the curves are maximum. That's why so many of my patients come to me with neck pain or back pain, or uh, the diagnosis almost is always cervical spondylosis or lumbar spondylosis. The degenerative changes are more here. Also, vertebral column is only consists of bones one on top of the other. And between each bone is a is a soft jelly-like substance is called the intervertebral disc. The intervertebral disc actually is again com comprises two parts. A very very uh, fibrous it's called the annulus fibrosus, a very fibrous or harder tissue, and a very jelly-like toothpaste-like substance called the nucleus pulposus. Now scientists have studied that the most comfortable position, you all know, is, what is when you are horizontal. 25% of pressure only when you lie down. And this can shoot up 8 times or even 10 times when you bend forward. So your spine is at risk. More pressure, the intradiscal pressures which are measured, please. The intradiscal pressures which are measured, uh, work more when you bend forward, which is why you you see your doctor for back pain or neck pain. They tell you don't don't bend, don't lift. So the reason is that when these pressures go up, I told you about the nucleus pulposus, a soft portion can actually herniate out and compress on the nerve, and sometimes cause very severe pain. It's called sciatica. Sciatic pain is very very severe. And once you get and I have patients, you know, crawling into my clinic with sciatic. However, not all patients are suffering from sciatica. If all patients are suffering from sciatica, they will all be needing surgery. It's not so. Back pain is very, very common. And 80% of the population, how many of you have back pain any time during? Wow, I think I must give you my listing back. <laughs> Um, so, 80% suffer at some point or the other. Recurrence is 
70 to 90 percent. That's why it's called back pain. It keeps coming back and back and back. And then 40 percent are chronic sufferers. And very often it's the young age group which is affected. But it's not always sciatica, which is the first pressure on the intervertebral disc or nerve compression because of that or entrapment neuropathy or even damage to the vertebra. You need not think any back pain is multiple myeloma just because you only with a chittapa suffered from it. Okay, it's the commonest cause is still strain to the lower back, strain to the muscles or ligaments supporting the back. Now that itself is a very huge diagnosis because is it a facetal joint problem? Is it a, a strain to the interspinous ligament or to the ligament? Essentially, we are talking about prevention. How do we prevent or modify? Now, there are some factors that can be modified, some that cannot. Of course, one of the causes for, for that pain is obesity. You know, obesity is, is a very huge uh, problem today, especially in the developed countries, but of course we are also developing, so obesity is also becoming a very <coughs> huge problem here today. And uh, very simple, we keep concentrating on Uttar Pradesh, the Madhya Pradesh becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> One patient came to me, sir, muttu valigidu, sir, enge valigidu, neengale paathu solong, enak teri la. He's not able to see, kuli kiyam bodhu, this huge size. And it's also spilling on into the younger age groups. Obesity, of course, some of them are familial or hereditary or genetic causes for obesity. So the chap told me, sir, Appa, Amma, Unnu, Uttu, Pole, sir. Appa, Noor, Kila, Amma, Nuthi, Ode, Naa, Nuthi, Muppad, sir. Sir, Unnu, Uttu, Pole, sir. So, one is genetic, but otherwise, we got to take care of the Roads. I googled Indian roads. The first picture I got was this. So, nothing much you can do about the roads, but uh, yeah, you got to drive carefully. And I was presenting this in a company in Hindi, and it happened is sometime in December. So, uh, I told them, Road, Allah, path, word, and I said, Chap, so, sir, road, enga, sir, <laughs> yeah. That time, uh, he said, uh, this is overflowing. India at one, sp one time was, you have to look between two buildings and assume it's a road in between. Abhidhar, mm full -hmm. So, yeah, some people uh, I have cured with just telling them to change your shock observers. Now, lifting like this, yes, looks very nice. But, <laughs> but the key, the key words are sudden and unplanned. Essentially, we need not challenge ourselves. If you can lift, you lift. Otherwise, generally they say, you know, if you have to lift a heavy weight, check whether you can lift and whether there are enough handles. Of course, not this type. I'm talking when, when you're lifting something. You know, a lot of my patients come to me after they have moved house and they say, Poti Pugna Sar, Bhiro Tarino Sar, and they get the back pain. One chap even came to me, you know, after Monday morning. He crawled into my clinic, then said, Sir, Mumba Oli Guru Sar, Niya Pondne, Sir, Beach Party Sar, I know what happened, Beach Party. So anyway, I asked him, Niya Pondne, Sir, Yaro Budhichana Sar, Talem Mela. I didn't ask for the details, except that his MRI revealed a huge disc prolapse. Sudden, unplanned lifting. So, uh, uh, one more risk factor which I think is missed out here is pregnancy. Of course, it affects only 50% of the population, but still, during the course of pregnancy, a lot of people neglect their backs. If you have seen a gravity female walking, they will always be standing in their back support because their, their back muscles are not enough to support their back. So, they physically support it with their hands. The main thing is antenatal and postnatal exercises. So, looking at the risk factors like, you know, uh, putting on a paunch or to 
or pregnant during pregnancy or driving or even sitting at the camp, coming to sitting and other things. Uh, so this is posture. Now they say you got to stand as erect as you can. Maybe just four feet ten inches, that's okay. But you stand as erect as you can. There are people who, you know, six feet four inches, they're so tall. All the doors will be smaller than them. So they keep bending, stand in the bus, they are standing like this. So whole time they are like this. So they say, they keep like this. That's called a sway back. Sway back. So ideal posture is where you stand with all the three curves in a straight line. So of course there are curves, I told you that. But these curves must be aligned. Lifting heavy objects. This is not a good thing because I told you earlier, the pressures can mount about 8 to 10 times. So unless you are used to it, don't lift a basketball to the lamp, but anything heavier than that I am sure. So ideal way to lift any object is to go down using your normal hip and knee, go down to the level of the object, give it a tug, see if you can really lift it. Keeping your back absolutely straight and very important, keep the object close to you by lifting, carrying and placing. This could, this could mean a, a bag, a baby, whatever you lift, lift close to the body. You please hold on, but we, we doctors have to be very careful. Next day one lady came to me, sir, you are swelling a parangwa, parangwa, rare blisters, pressure cooker, we took that. So, uh, lying down. A lot of people ask me, sir, what mattress to use? Use a firm, F-I-R-M, firm mattress. Not a hard floor. A lot of you suddenly they get down from the bed and Allah kushyar, no? The back pain on the thing. So somebody would have told them, floor la patthana seri hai, no? Not necessarily. You don't torture yourself. So you can use what is called a firm, cotton mattress, cotton firm mattress. Use that and lie on your side. Lie on your side, keep a pillow between both folded knees. Keep a pillow between four, both folded knees. You can use a thinner pillow than this and uh, go off to sleep. Then don't check. One chap came next morning, sir. Two come up, wait, sir. If you put this one, I used to correct myself. Not required. You go off to sleep, get up in the morning, whichever position you want, not a problem. But starting position, sideline. If you feel you don't get sleep, sideline, lie face up, fold your knees or place a couple of pillows under your knees. Sorry, why the pillow be, uh, between the four Symmetrical. Knees? So that because you are, you are, there is a natural, your pelvis, your hips are really apart. You are, you are uh, <coughs> drag on the, the upper uh, leg this leg, the drag of gravity can actually cause a strain of the load. So they say keep it symmetrical, keep the pelvis straight. Keep a couple of, again this reason is there, why do you fold your knees? You go home tonight, now you feel this, the lumbar curve, just feel it, your own back, feel it here. <laughs> there is a curve there. So that curve, you go back home, and when you lie down on a firm surface or even on the floor, fold your knees, you will find that curve is not there. It's gone. Now that's something about pelvic tilt and all that. Don't worry about that. But essentially, the lower back curve gets obliterated when you fold your knees or even keep a couple of pillows under your knees. So that gives the support to the lower back. Whole day you sit, whole day you stand. These muscles of the neck and back are not supported. Also have a small folded towel under the neck. It's okay to use a pillow, use a small cervical pillow. Pain in the neck, a lot of people think it means different people, but I'm talking about actual pain in the neck. What's the commonest cause of pain in the neck? Cervical spondylosis, yes. Any others? Wearing helmets. Wearing helmets. Wrong pillow. Wrong pillow. The commonest cause of pain in the neck is head weight. Okay. 
the the head weighs the head weighs six to eight kilos. Somebody asked me with or without brain cell <laughs> or whatever. It's still six to eight kilos, and it's an amazing marvel of engineering. Amazing marvel because imagine whole day you sit you sit on the computer or you sit watching me or do all sorts of this whole thing is balanced so nicely by muscles in front and the back. But remember, you don't give it any uh, rest. You use asymmetric positioning. Like you sit and read. Okay? Or you lie down, use three pillows, and then you read. Or you lie down, use three pillows, watch TV. There is no support for the muscles of the neck. So, over a period of time, you lose. Is that meant for me? Yes. No, no. <laughs> 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 well, if I have to what's my time? Uh, the is not when you ring at length, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so the neck has therefore to be maintained and stable. A lot of people who work on the calm just see that you center yourself at the monitor. Very basic thing. A lot of people sit like this and work. Or they read with their head flexed for so long. So I've seen people working in very odd postures. How many of you use laptops? Okay. Laptop. Well, ten years back when I was giving similar lectures, you know, a couple of people. How many use laptop? Na rendi per kai tu baar. And they used to think it's some sort of a promotion. Sir, they give us laptops. Now here we are managing something. Let's say. The, the delivery manager. So, which means it's almost like a promotion to get a laptop. Unfortunately, a laptop can never be very ergonomic. Somebody wanted to know about ergonomics. Ergonomics is matching the job to the worker. Some people think it's also matching the worker to the job, but that's secondary. Essentially, it means you match your workstation to yourself. So, yep. Ergonomics is the car goes. Ergonomics is there in the cars, which, whichever posture that you work in. Me not be, I am not, I am talking mostly of office ergonomics because a lot of us are in offices. But I am, I actually deliver lectures to people who, you know, work still on those machines and lathe and other work. This is probably a very useful slide for, for all of you working on the system. Just see that your lower back is supported on a chair which is fairly modular. In the sense, the, what are the things that you can adjust on the chair are the armrest, the backrest, the height of the seat, um, then the height of the keyboard and the height of the monitor. Essentially we are talking about heights. If the monitor, top of the monitor is too high, then you tend to either look up or that your eyes are open and they say it's not good for your eyes because you get computer vision syndrome. Okay, that's another new disease brought on by computer. Uh, so we will we'll go in order. Keep shoulders relaxed. So if you approach your office tomorrow and you see yourself in front of a computer, just see once whether uh, whether your chair is still yours. Sometimes you go and find a chair missing. Select your chair, which is modular, ergonomic chair. Keep your shoulders relaxed and sit down. Keep your elbows at 90 degrees and your, that means your forearms parallel to the ground. Your wrists and fingers, again, neutral, not like this. Hip angle and knee angle, approximately 90. Protract one there will like. Essentially, your, your thighs must be parallel to the ground. See that your feet are resting and then your seat has a slight backward slope and your lower back, the lumbar curve I talked to you about, must be supported here. You can actually, you don't need to sit like a robot, you can actually shift your position once in a while because you need blood to flow down to your legs. OSHA guidelines say you must take 5 minutes off every hour to do those break exercises. I can tell you some of the exercises. Experiment to find most what is most comfortable. See that 
your monitor height is at, at or slightly below the top, the top of your monitors at or slightly below your eyes, with the viewing distance of about one and a half to two feet. Now, if you can't measure all that, don't worry. To stretch out your hand, your middle finger, if it touches the monitor, that's approximately the right distance. You may have refractory errors. So, you will tend to look forward. So, that's causing forward bend syndrome. Obliteration of cervical orders. These are a nice terms I use to my patients. Keep this statement typing. If you are using a lot of document work, source documents at the same height. And of course, as I told you, you must have a foot support. It must be either on a, on a foot support or on the floor. Now, there are of course people who do suffer from pain despite all this. We talked about prevention. So, how do you treat a person with pain once he has come? Obvious uh, thing is to reach out for a pill, but of course, uh, self medication itself is not good. But even then, even if you do medicate yourself or there is a, there's a medication that your doctor gives you, you must know that there are adverse uh, effects of many, many medications, not necessarily only with. In allopathy, it is documented. The other the drugs, I don't know. There may be adverse effects of other things also. So, I really I wish you all a, a life where you don't have to take too many medicines. Physiotherapy also, yes, do people do have recourse to some electrotherapy like heat or, or uh, ultrasound or IFT. So, that is prescribed and given. Yeah, like this traction, some people take traction, some people take laser therapy, some people need ultrasound. So that again is prescribed and given. And of course, at the end of it, there is, uh, there is a good relief. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's good for both the patient as well as the doctor. But what I would like to stress is exercise. Most important among all this, and in fact, the programs that we do in most of the software companies, I talk for half an hour and get down. And a physiotherapist takes over, starts teaching it. What are the types of exercises that you know of? Sorry? Surya Namaskara. Somebody said mental exercise. But I have physical. Walking. Walking. Cycling. Exercise cycling. Swimming. Art of living. Aerobics. Aerobics, yes. Essentially, aerobic is a very generic term. Treadmill. Treadmill. So, these are all coming under aerobic. Any aerobic exercise burns up the fuel in your body, needs oxygen. So, so aerobics, when you say, it means it's a very vigorous physical activity. A lot of people do that to stay trim, to stay fit and so on. So, that is one group, the aerobics. Next group is the strengthening, where you want to develop all those muscles and um, pump all those weights and you know look uh, look great. Now, strengthening is good up to a certain level, but beyond that level, I wouldn't say it's very good for the for the system. In fact, it would be dangerous. One chap came to me and said, "Sir, Payangra Modu Valley, sir." I said. Every mudu bali, sir, gym pone sir. Gym le niya pannay. Arudhi kilo tu pune sir. Arudhi tu tu kilo di yavlo yavlo vashma pani indrika. Sir, pone varana sir, pone gym mudu model la. Sir, pone varana gym koi te varidi tu lift sixty kilo sir. Sir, adu to varu kali ana sir. Two weeks le he wanted to build up his muscles. No no. So, that is strengthening, which has to be done with certain ages and with the guidance of your trainer and so on. But the exercises we normally teach to those who come to us with pain and getting, you know, getting better after that is what we call as stretches. Along with Surya Namaskaram, Yoga, or what we call as computer break exercises, which you can even do in front of your computers 
can be done. Simple stretches for the neck, for the for the uh, elbows, for the for the wrist, for the palm. All these stretches would itself be. See, stretching is something very normal. You see, any animal when it gets up, first thing what does it do? Stretch. So much. So much. First thing. And even uh, as a child, I'm sure all of you must have been able to put your own toe into your own mouth. Now you can't try. <laughs> Don't try. So that sort of flexibility is gone. And it's a natural process of aging also that you become more and more uh, inflexible at least in your joints. So, so I would advise uh, that a lot of, uh, you, you can, we, we normally prescribe a regimen of about 4 to 3 aerobics with about 3 of stretches. But each regime has got, each, uh, you have several things, aerobic people, the people who dance for the same, people who swim, people who do yoga and people who do art of living, so many things. So all those would be useful in preventing all those things. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, we so open for questions. Uh, <coughs> and just one question that I have, uh, is, you know, uh, today